Cheryl's Last Stand, Book One of Belly Dancing and Beyond, written by Kerry Knorr, narrated by Nano Nagel. Just a thought. When one door closes, another opens, so the saying goes. When one door closes, another slams in your face, so the joke goes. For Cheryl, however, that door was always for someone else. Until she met Nefertiti. Chapter One Cheryl watched the droopy lids of his eyes fill with water and pulled out a tissue. You've got some arse on you, he said, dismissing the tissue. You are like a you at topping time. He moved behind her and pressed his fingers into the small of her back. There's plenty of meat on you, girl. Mr. Rugby was the only person who called her a girl, and he was the only man whose fingers came near her body. She watched as he fumbled his way into the cupboard beneath the stairs and pulled out a bottle of Aberfeldy. "'Your mother has always been a little on the bony side for me,' he muttered into the dark. "'I like someone with a bit of meat on them, something to grab hold of. "'The problem with your mother,' he continued, "'is she lives on her nerves. It makes her lean and mean.' "'My mother eats like a horse,' said Cheryl. Mr. Rugby had one final fumble with the bottle before he stumbled over to Cheryl and handed it to her. She eased it open and placed it on the kitchen table. "'And she don't know a good thing when she sees it,' he continued, pouring out the whisky. Cheryl motioned for him to stop, but he carried on until the glass was full. "'Take that George feller. If you ask me, she isn't going to get any better offers. Not in a wheelchair.' and certainly not the way she drives. Cheryl said nothing. She looked at her full glass and tried to remember if it was her third or fourth. Now what you need is something smooth, he said, staggering off to the stairs again. Cheryl threw a shovel of coal on the fire, careful not to look in the direction of the mirror above it. It was a sort of mirror best avoided in daylight, and for the past two hours she had managed it. Mr. Rugby pulled out a bottle of Royal Brackler. "'The Marilyn Monroe of malts,' he whispered, and dusted it with his sleeve. "'Full-bodied, curvaceous, and well-endowed,' he read off the label, then looked at Cheryl. "'Whatever happened to Petey?' Later on that night she sat in front of another mirror, behind the bar of the Argyle Hotel. Shifty the barman was playing... Islands in the street. Sample complete. Ready to continue?